Hi everyone, my name is Patrick. I'm the founder of PJCP, and this is my studio. Today in the studio we have my creative director, the amazing Nick Sizemore. I love candy, he loves color. We're gonna talk all about candy boards today. Take it away, what do you um, got for us? Yes, thank you so much. Um, we're gonna kind of start off with what we call the quintessential candy board. Um, this trend really started to base off the charcuterie board. So really kind of thinking about those classic uh, shapes and elements of the board will kind of help drive a little bit of our general composition. Great. So here, normally on a charcuterie board, you have a couple of vessels, which are generally filled with like honey or jam. Mm. So kind of keeping that idea, but filling them with smaller candy that might generally roll off the board. Um, yes, always. It, listen, oops, accidents happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, generally keeping smaller candies that would roll off is a great way to kind of fill those. And then kind of thinking about a composition of balance and texture. So we want salty things like Jordan almonds here. We want kind of sugar candy, which would be like gumballs or even gummies. We, Patrick, um, generally eats the candy um, often when we're making these. And I recommend at home finishing your board first before um, continuing to eat the product. Whoever pays for the candy can eat it. Very true. Um, you have a salty cover or a, a sugary covered snack. So again, like these little hippos are so um, also very, Flamingos. very good. And then having a little bit of wrapped uh, balance. So you have a matte wrap, which is the Tootsie Roll, and then a little bit of the metallic wrapped too. Always adds some nice contrast and um, balance. This is why you don't talk. And I, I'm time. a better candy eater, I guess. <laughs> I love what you've done here with also like the wood board, the clear glass, the rose gold and pestle. It's it, the extends the story and it tells a really nice story there. Just um, pretty in pink. Pretty in pink. Is it your favorite color? Yeah, exactly. So this <laughs> could be a great theme for maybe a bachelor party or you could just be a person who's obsessed with pink and that's me and so I selfishly went for the thing I love. Awesome. Tell us about these other boards. I, different scenarios, I guess, right? Yeah. So after the, you know, you kind of get the master of the classic done, you can start to do spins on this and plays, which just will really open up the door to some really interesting things. So here's an example of maybe a vertical candy board versus a horizontal board. Also a good example of like really playing into a theme. So Patrick is in love with the Yankees, so this was a no-brainer for us. And really making sure you keep those same balances. So salty things, sugary things, and also lots of no uh, no novelty candy. What do you have there, Patrick? Um, this is a burger. I bet it tastes just like a cheeseburger, too. I hope so, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That would be amazing, <laughs> but kind of. Um, so loose gum here, you know, some sunflower seeds, like all adds a, a balance of texture and contrast, and also make sure that all of your guests Find something they like on the right. Board. That's great if like you're kind of not doing sugar or something. The seeds, the nuts. That's really right. good addition. Really Even you could do plain popcorn. Yeah. So healthy, it's healthy alternatives. I mean, healthy it's alternatives in a candy board. Right. Um, the next one is probably your showstopper. Like this is your photographable one. Everyone's gonna want to take a picture of this. This is also a little bit more. I know this might look like a more expensive option, but actually can lend into a more inexpensive option. Mm -hmm because you can buy a lot of variety or mixed bags of candy and then just separate them all by color and then add them in a Roy G. Biv palette. Clean, it's easy, it's colorful, it's beautiful. lots of flavors too. Lots of flavors. So like, yes, every flavor you could ask for is on that board. Yep, and, doesn't, and you have hard candies, you have soft candies. Again, you wanna play with like mixtures of, of texture and, and, um, and flavor profiles. For nice. Time. This is a great example of, of maybe a friend who's in love with one kind of candy. So maybe you have, you're obsessed with M&Ms or you love Jelly Belly, Jelly Beans, or you love gummy bears, for instance. You can buy one kind of candy in a magnitude of variety of color and make a really cool, um, kind of, a, again, a spin on a candy board, but it's a really great way it's to- It's like our gummy it. pizza. We love a gummy pizza. This is a great example too of, you know, if you're, if it's kind of just a hostess gift, you can take it and they set it on their side table and it's like an addition to the party. It's a little munchy. Uh, these are much bigger, they'd be much more of the main event. Yeah, and sometimes I like to make my candy board on site. So uh, the host often likes to watch it being made. It's a really fun, interactive kind of thing. I generally like to make it because I don't want to put any more burden on the host. I'm trying to bring a gift. I don't necessarily want her to do more work or right. him, but it's good for us to kind of do it, it's fun. Awesome, walk us through the Halloween. Yep, yeah. and so your two big holidays for candy generally are Easter and Halloween. So they're, they're big showstoppers. Candy boards are a no brainer for these holidays. Here we just kind of made a really nice mixture as we talked about before. We start with the base, which is larger elements. So we have big peeps that are in kind of monsters and, and spooky ghouls here. Uh, so creating piles of those in a triangular shape, adding in your salty treats here. We have a little bit of a pretzel and then a chocolate Reese cup. Just again, adding different flavor profiles and textures. Yeah. These also act as a base for you to like layer on the smaller candies later. So adding those in first is really quite essential. 
Next, I layer in the, the color to make sure that that's really balanced. So here we have a nice triangular shape of purple, and then we have another triangular shape of this orange. Again, making sure it feels really balanced. Yeah. Um, I see you've mixed like the, the matte and shiny wrappings. Yep. And if you're taking this to a friend's house, we recommend the edge on the tray. It works really great uh, if you're transporting it. Nothing's going to fall out for sure. Yeah, and another little trick is sometimes your candy doesn't come in the best shape. So dividing it out by the broken pieces and the whole pieces, you'll be able to fill in the, the broken pieces first, and then you can place the whole pieces on top. I like a little tiny tweezer. Crazy. Um, it's super crazy, but you can really strategically start to place some of these more beautiful pieces just for that perfect photo right when you're done before your guests arrived. Um, nice pro trick for that. Perfect photo, he does a whole photo shoot. Yeah. And a time lapse, yeah. and a mood board, and a dream about it, all the fantasies. Well, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy making your candy board. Have a great party.